Hey there, lovely people. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This week I am sitting outside, so I'm going to be squinting. It's really bright out. I usually wear transitions. Um, I wanted you to be able to see my face, but now I'm squinting. So this is where we're at. I have been working on my Preptober stuff out here, so I felt like it would be silly for me to like be sitting at my desk and talking at you and pretending that like that's what I've been doing because it's not I've been sitting outside because it's been like getting cold and great and uh like the sun has been fantastic so I've been working outside and now you're gonna work outside with me because I am almost done with my Preptober process so last year I used these two books um Save the Cat by Blake Snyder it the inspiration to save the cat writes a novel which is a book that i do not yet have on my shelf and story genius by lisa cron um in this book the author that lisa cron is walking through the process is jenny nash and jenny nash has this book which is blueprint for a book and it kind of it's the like mental process before you get into this outlining system and it's got like a slightly different outline system and it's like 14 steps that she uses in terms of like book coaching people through their writing process to make them have what they need to have going up she says it should take eight weeks to fully get through um so i do not think i do not think that i've been giving it the attention that it deserves which is unfortunate but i do think that it has been immensely helpful in terms of like thinking about the book that i want to write for november i wanted to talk about what my plan is for this nanorimo month since i will not be using the nanorimo platform and i wanted to finish off my last step in here i'm on step 13 and there are 14 steps so i need to finish step 13 and then also get through step 14. So I thought this could be like a little work with me session. And then we could talk about what's going on for me and some other folks. And if you wanted to be one of those folks for the month of November, formerly known as NaNoWriMo, it's still known as that. It's just they're doing a lot that's like not great. Last year was my first time participating in the actual National Novel Writing Month platform and using their system and like doing the actual challenge and trying to get to 50,000 words and achieving it and um I really enjoyed using the platform I really enjoyed like the like reward <laughs> of seeing the progress that I made built out and it was a really cute website and it was really great for just getting that going but the people behind NaNoWriMo have partnered with an AI platform that they're saying like, hey, use AI to get to your 50,000 words. And I don't love that um, for a multitude of reasons. One, let the robots have the jobs nobody wants. Let the robots have the jobs that are like hard. Let them solve coding problems because that's like right up their alley. They're also code. But like, why are we giving art? and creativity and like storytelling to a system that can't comprehend it in the way that people can. No, um, that and they had some issues of child safety in their platform. I never used any of the like meet and greet systems or like people in your area go to these writing events things on the platform when I was on it last year, but apparently <laughs> Apparently some bad people were using it to um, have access to children that they might not have had access to outside of this platform and they haven't really made any statements to my knowledge addressing that. I'm aware that that is a problem. It's not a problem that directly affects me because I don't have children nor do I have um, any interest in being around children so like that situation doesn't directly impact me but i know that it is something that is seriously important so like i haven't been keeping tabs on that but i was already planning on not using the platform because i heard about that and then they doubled down in terms of like doing things that aren't great for the writing community by saying hey use our ai system so we're definitely not doing that um because I'm a spreadsheet girly, I built out a spreadsheet <laughs> and I built in all of the aspects of what I liked about the NaNoWriMo platform and 
I'm honestly like really proud of it. So I'm gonna put in like a little tour voiceover situation of that. And there will be a link in the description for you to like copy that into your Google Sheets, uh, your own personal Google Sheets if you wanted to do that. Um, I think it's just a lot more fun to do it in a way that you can like build out what you want to keep track of, what you're interested in, and like you can add things to the version that I made and be like, I wrote about this, I wrote from this character's perspective. You can take notes on like what your writing session was like because it's fully, it's like, it's, you're, the world is your oyster and there's so many options for what you can do with it. All right, so this is what I'm working with right now for my 30 day writing challenge spreadsheet. So the general concept is this can happen whenever you want. It starts, like you start off in this corner with the month and the year, and you can choose, I'm doing obviously November, 2024, because that's right now, but you could also do December, 2024, or December, 2026, or April, 2026. And this should, theoretically, assuming that I solved all of the bugs, is going to work no matter what. So we're gonna set this back to uh, November, 2024, and, the way that it works is it gives you kind of like a reward every time you do something and you can add new like categories like you could put in a vibe check over here like an emoji or something and just change how far this highlight goes out but the way that i wanted to use it is i wanted to have like this is my first session on the first and my word count was 500 so i put that in it pops up on the calendar i've written 500 words on the first there it is totaled out for the day and then it totals out for the month so far as i add more to it so essentially you just keep putting in like this is my second session and i wrote um 13 mm, i wrote 700 words and now that was on the first and now i've got 1200 words for the day and then I had my first session on the second and I wrote a thousand words and that's how you fill this page out but it doesn't have the full reward of like watching it grow. You don't have the visual aspect of what I enjoyed about the NaNoWriMo website last year so I also built that. So that's just going to be in a second tab down here and this is your chart. So this chart gives you, it automatically is going to fill. So you can choose what your word count goal is and put it in here. And then this will divide it by however many days are in this column. So this is 30 days. That gives you the 1667 for 50,000 words. But if you wanted to do like 70,000 words, you just go in here, pop in here, change that. And now your daily word count goal is changed. Your chart has changed. All of that is different. But what happens is this is automatically gonna pull the total from this page of any addition that has like the first or the second, and it's gonna put it into the proper column over here, total it out, and then this column adds gradually as you go down everything above it for your total word count. And all of these numbers will then lead into your chart here. So let's pretend that I was actually on par, and we'll give this a thousand words here so then when we go over to our chart we see that this is like right in line with this dot grid here and I went with purple and blue because that was the vibe that I was in but this is so easy to change whatever colors you want you just go into customize and then like the background color I want it to be green and then you change it that's a really vibrant that's aggressive probably that green maybe I don't know, personal preference. You can change it to whatever you like. And then if you wanna change your accent colors, you just go in here and um, gold progress is this dotted line. You can change how the dashes look and make it however you want that to look. I personally think the dotted line gives it like, this is the goal, but you can make like squares. You can make them big. You can do whatever you want to make this like your vibe you can take the dots away i personally like the dots you can change it so that your actual progress doesn't have numbers on it and you just see like charts 
can change the color make it whatever your vibe is whatever you're going for I actually kind of like this purple better. I'm going to keep it at that purple. I like that because it's the same color as the background now. But yeah, so if you don't like the colors that this is, it's so easy. Just change them. Pop in here and make them whatever color you would like them to be. Um, and the same goes over here. Just there's a lot of things happening on this page. It's not hard. You just like and you want it to be this color, you should be able to just drag it down like that. So you just have to grab two columns is the thing. So like you grab the one that's colored that you changed and then you grab one of the white ones and then you can drag it down and it'll change all of those to that like alternating color pattern. Whatever you want it to be. I want it to be blue. So we're gonna keep it as blue. This side is going to take a little bit more effort. Try, try not to like change any of the formulas that are in here because that is what makes it work. Um, so all of these top rows have these like crazy number things going on and they pull the information from here and that's like the important part of what makes it work. But in general, changing the color should not be an issue you can change what this says by typing it in up here like if you're doing a 70,000 word challenge you change the 50 to 70 or just delete the numbers and just have word challenge so november 2024 word challenge um this exact one will be linked in the description so that you can have it download it it'll pop up as a copy into your Google Sheets and then you can change the title, change whatever you want and that's your version but that's what will pop up when you get the link and it's all yours. Do what you will. I, I've set it up so that you can go about your time and do what you need to do. You can add whatever you want like I know NaNoWriMo had how did you feel about this session or like what what were you working on in this session. You've got the space that you can add whatever you would like. Like these columns are spacers and you can you can extend this call like this chart however you need it to go and if you add something or drag something the formula should stay the same so like if i grab this and i move it over here it should still it'll still have the same information but it's just in a different spot so if you want to move some stuff go forth have a good time it just might not let you for some things like uh this column is a merged cell so like b c and d are all this one cell so you would have to unmerge that same with this title but that's just on those title bars and it's like so low stakes for everything else um so you would just hit unmerge and then your cells would be fine you just re-merge them together and then you have your cute little title. But yeah, that's what I've got. That's what I'm giving you. Go forth and enjoy your writing challenge. If you are not a spreadsheet girly, probably don't change anything. That's fine. If you are not a spreadsheet person, not everybody is. It took me a while to get into it. It's fine. Do what you gotta do. Until I work out a better system for me, this is what we're doing and we're making content this month. So <laughs> that is for you guys. Back to my writing session. But yeah, let's do a little a little writing session. As I finish working through the last couple of steps that I have in my blueprint for a book, and then I'll decide if I need to flesh out more of an outline. I am writing a YA romance because I've been on like a YA romance kick lately. I've just been reading a lot of YA romances because I feel like there's it's really hard to do them poorly. Like an adult romance, it can be boring if the stakes aren't high enough or like what their lives are like isn't as interesting but I feel like YA because it's set in high school and the things that matter to a person who's in high school at that stage of their life are so important to them they're so core of people at that age it's like no matter what the stakes are if you had the same stakes on an adult romance it probably wouldn't be high enough but because they're in high school and they've got that teenager mindset it 
it's so high the stakes are so high because they don't know that there, there's no world to really compare it to and it's just we are so sad like we need to have these things figured out because if we don't have it figured out like nothing's gonna be good ever again and i honestly love that so i've kind of taken a teeny bit of inspiration from several of the books that i've read and also like myself in high school and the friend groups like the different friend groups that i was in in high school and the things that i wish that i could have learned myself in my own time while i was at that age where things could settle in a little bit more that i've had to kind of figure out on my own now and i've also taken inspiration from some of the like YA romance series and also like adult romance series where it's like a series of standalones that you have all of your friends all of the friends that are a part of the group and each of them have their own like story that ties into each of the other stories it's it's like a very common publishing system and i know that a lot of people don't like it because it's really hard to just find a standalone book that's not like a part of a standalone of like a series of standalones but i do really like it because it's like sometimes you're not done and then they're like happy and you just don't know what's going on afterwards and you want to know what's going on afterwards because you spent all because you spent all this time being with the people in the story and like watching their relationship grow from nothing and into something that like being able to explore more of that world or like see them after from somebody else's perspective of like oh well they're a really cute couple and all that kind of thing it like tickles my brain in a way that i enjoy and i really liked sarah sutton's most likely to series that it took place in the same year and like all of the people in it were like they had this one they were friends and then they also had this thing that forced their relationship in like their relationship to develop which was that most likely to list and having that like tie-in and having the friends that are just buddies and like seeing the overlap and like the little easter eggs of the, oh i remember when that was, that happened in the other story or like the tie-ins of just having dialogue that overlaps between the books because these the main characters of each of the books are friends with each other is just fun it's just a fun system and i am a fan of it and i kind of want to explore what that would look like so i have the thoughts of what like i guess general tropes i don't know if that's even fair what kind of concept because i don't know if they're all tropes of like I have one that's best friend's brother that's a trope that's fully just a trope but like there are other types of like i've got an idea of who the relationships will be for the next couple of books if i continue going with this if i'm able to finish i've got those like loosely 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 outlined um and it's like i'd have to develop most of those characters anyway because they're gonna be friends of the main character of this book so it doesn't hurt to know who they are and what their like goals are but that's essentially what i'm working on right now this this one is really targeting myself in high school and like not letting not letting myself fall into i have to be fantastic at everything that i do um and not falling into the trap of like I'm good at this thing so this is my thing this is the thing that i do but that's what i'm working on and that's the goal for this month's for this this 30-day challenge 30-day writing challenge so the last chapter in this book is about revising so I'll have to come back to that when I am ready to revise. Um, and then it goes into like how you can use it for agent pitching. And that's great. I'm not doing that right now. I'm writing it. And I think that I will probably use the same structure from the Story Genius outline because it is just a more 
fleshed out version of this outline because it's like what's the point of the scene <laughs> what happens what's the consequence and then like it's specifically like what happens physically like what happens in the plot and then what the consequence of that thing happening happening physically in the plot and then it goes into like what's the emotional reason why it matters and this system is asking you to like what's the scene and what's the point of the scene so it's just two steps out of this outline structure so i'm probably gonna just do both so i've got this like <laughs> it's a juggling act for sure so this one is a like setup to know the moments that your story is going for and why they're happening so it's like what's the scene what what's the point of the scene because of that scene what happens in the next scene um and then this one goes into a more like as you're writing fleshing out the scenes as you go which is what i did last year and i think that that was good i think it worked but i know that there's like a designed structure for like the romance genre but I feel like I've read so much of it that I'm like, I got it. I got it. It's fine. Not that big of a deal. I don't need to have like the romancing the beat book that's like 50 50 on whether or not people like it. You either like love it full heart, like so perfectly, or you don't like it. And something that I've noticed is that I like the books that kind of go a little bit off the structure. Like, I don't want to know that no matter what, if I get to 30% of the way into the book, the characters are going to kiss. I know that. And then if I get to like 72%, they're probably going to break up soon. Because that's like not very fun. And considering I read most of my books virtually where it gives me a percent and not a page number, be that audiobook or ebook, I just don't, I want it to be what you need it to be but i also don't want it to be exactly according to the formula and that's where i'm at so i think i'm perfectly comfortable with having this be like a this is where we start this is where we're ending and that's the change that we're going through as a character and then going from there to why it matters rather than like i need to hit this particular thing at this exact moment in the story because i think that they'll come up naturally just because i know what genre i'm writing and i read a lot of it i've read a lot of it i read like 15 ya romance books in the course of two months and i think that i can get it without doing too much of a, a detailed outline i'm going to outline as i go i'm gonna outline as i go just to make sure that there's like momentum going and I'm not just writing a scene because it felt good in the moment. I want to make sure that everything that I write is going to serve a purpose. And yeah, some of it's going to get cut at some point, probably. Uh, I might scrap the whole thing and rewrite it like I did with last year's NaNoWriMo project. But for now, that's the goal is just to like do as much effectively as possible. So at this point, where I'm at right now, I just have to choose names because I've just been doing FMC and MMC. And then for one of the exercises in here, it has you write the opening and closing scenes three times, three separate ways, starting and ending, like starting in a different place each time. And then you pick one of those that resonates the most with you from the starting point and write your ending scene based off of that. And you do three, three different possible endings until you find the one that reson resonates with you. And I fully just named the character Sammy. She's she's similar to me, but she's also nothing like me. Um, <laughs> like she's very, she's got way more confidence than I did in high school. She's got way more confidence than me, but um, a lot of things are similar. So I was like, whatever, point of view character, her name's Sammy. And then I named the other side characters off of friends that I actually had in middle school and high school. And I was like, this is not what I need. This is so far from what I need, but I just need to be able to track who the friends are. And 
Yeah. So I gotta come up with names and put put the names effectively where they need to go. And I have a list of names. It's in my idea notebook. I have a list of names. I just gotta pick some that feel right and not weird and not too adjacent to people that I knew in real life since this is loosely, super, super loosely based off of my experience um, in high school, like so loosely. It's so not anywhere near the similar, like so not similar at all, but I will be basing the school off of the high school that I went to, like, like the class schedule, how lunches work, where people sit, how you choose your classes, that stuff will all be based off of my high school which may not even be accurate anymore because I know that they've got like a different, they had a different math class structure coming in my senior year. So I don't know if that's still around or if it's back to like, oh, you take geometry this year and then you take algebra this year and then you can either take AP Calc or you can take um, AP Stats or you can take whatever. Or if it's like math one, math two, math three, math four i don't know i don't know but we're gonna we're gonna stick with the like geometry statistics because that's what i want it to be but yes i'm going to attempt i don't know how well it'll go but i'm gonna attempt to do a weekly wrap-up type of video and like uh like a like a weekly vlog through november um of my writing process and like how it's how it's going and what the plan is and how I'm working on it and we will see we will see how that goes let me know in the comments if you're doing a 50,000 word challenge this month and like what genre you're writing you don't have to give me all of the information that I gave I'm perfectly comfortable like Every story's already been told and I don't think anybody's gonna steal it because I only have my own personal references of things. So let me know in the comments what you're up to and like how how you're feeling about it and if how your Preptober is going. And I will see you guys next week, assuming everything goes well.